I can update you on the plan development and since the last meeting we've had a lot of detail added to the plan but we have not altered any walls layouts so it's the same plan that you're familiar with I haven't passed out another one because it's going to be a repeat of what you've seen but the information that we've added to the plan is increasing and we are working toward an October bid so we don't have much more time left uh, to make any additional changes so that's why it's good the plans I think are established uh, we've been getting sign-offs from the departments and, and the MEC on, on the plans it's been primarily a financial question with the project for the last uh, three weeks we were hoping to have an answer from state 911 by today as to the response to the MEC funding but that is still not coming out of state 911 so the information that we have on the MEC is still the 1.849590 which is one million eight hundred forty nine thousand five hundred ninety dollars has been approved and authorized by the state 911 for reimbursement for construction they have also submitted another hundred thousand dollars to be utilized for emergency generators so we have passed out a new and uh, actually Jack passed out a new project budget worksheet which gives you an update on the financials on the project and the 9 2016 budget for hard costs of the police department project show construction for the police construction for Mac and then the subtotals so construction for police is now at f anticipated at five million seven seventy six eight fifty five the mech is the one million nine forty nine five ninety which is the two numbers that I just talked about bringing a subtotal of seven million seven twenty six four forty five it's gone down from the August 4th construction budget for police because we have uh, had involvement from DPW to perform site work which that is the one thing that is now balancing the budget we are going to be putting together a detailed scope of work so it's clear for the general contractor what scope of work is to be performed under the general contractor scope and what scope of work is going to be done by the town with its own forces <coughs> It, we've done this on two recent projects and the cooperation with the general contractor in the town has been excellent uh, we have not had a lot of conflicts in sharing the site between general contractor and town forces uh, the town has been able to keep up with the work and because of this commitment and offer by DPW DPW has actually gone out there and started site work on that project Good. if you go by the site there's been a lot yesterday. of clearing grubbing yep. they've been actively performing the work the the reason we are comfortable with them performing the work is because of their commitment to continue the work if they were not going to continue the work we would have not wanted them to do the work that they did out there because we have a survey that shows existing conditions and that's what the general contractor would bid off of what he sees on the drawings for existing conditions well they're out there altering existing conditions so if the general contractor now has to figure out what's been altered that gets messy we don't have that conflict because the town's going to continue the work so but there has to be a clearly defined scope division we're going to draft that we're going to give it to the DPW and the DPW is going to have the opportunity to sign off on yes this will be performed by us or no we'd like the general contractor to do that once that documents been developed that goes into the project specifications and that's the way the projects bid but it we do see a significant savings to the project because of that uh, involvement from DPW the going down the rest of the project budget worksheet you see that the fire department project has gone from 4.8 million dollars to 4.2 million dollars 
That is not because of reduction in scope. That is because of the same commitment from the DPW to do site work at the fire station. There was $1.2 million worth of site work originally anticipated for the fire department project. So we have taken the $1.2 million of site work to 600000 anticipating a 50% savings because of owner, uh, owner's labor and owner's uh, involvement. So I don't want anybody to look at this and think we've cut the site work project in half. We've, we've altered the deliverable on how we're going to achieve site work. And we can evaluate all of this further down the road when, when the fire project is, is under dr the drawing phase. But that's what we're anticipating. With those two adjustments to police and fire, you can see that we've driven our contingency fund from a $87,000 number to a one that's in excess of $1.2 right now. So we've restored a contingency fund really 1.2 million of that is because of DPW so I, I, I think it's it's a great commitment it's something that's helping the project and helping get the project back to the anticipated budget <coughs> we will still have conversations with the town and with state 911 on how the MEC reimbursement might be adjusted and the way we are proposing bidding the project right now is bidding the project as a base bid project being base bid to encompass general contractor scope for the first floor <coughs> general contractor scope to provide a second floor deck and general contractor scope to install two stair towers and one elevator there is an alternate which is being pr proposed <coughs> excuse me at alternate number one for the contractor to identify all costs to do a build out on the second floor and the build out would be for all areas that are devoted to the mech there are several areas of the second floor which are not being funded by the state and that would be the area of future space, uh, the area of physical training, the area of building storage, and the area for P Norfolk Police Department communications. So it's not a build out of the entire second floor, but it's a build out of the second floor, which is areas only devoted to the MEC. That will include the training classroom. And it will include all of the areas of the dispatch center for the MEC. So we are seeking 100% reimbursement from the state for the build out of the training classroom, the entire training classroom, and all associated storage and kitchenettes and custodial associated with the training classroom. Because that is in the 1.89, 1.849 that was originally authorized for reimbursement and has been approved. In doing that, we are not calling any of the space on the second floor shared space. Because the state, for the state purposes of reimbursement, they don't reimburse on shared space. So it's just a logistical thing, I think. I just wanted to convey that because the state's reimbursing for it, it's going to be on the documents as MEC space. Once it's built, however the town and the MEC want to arrange for usage of that space is up to you. But for the drawing purposes, it's MEC space. For reimbursement purposes, it's MEC's training classroom, and it's their dispatch center. So that's the way the drawings will be compiled and bid. <coughs> we have a follow-up meeting and, and Andrew's going to be part of a meeting where this is going to be this concept is going to be presented to state 911 so there won't be any surprises when bids are open and the state said why did you do it that way. Uh, we want to have them on board 
before it goes out to bid to say yes we understand that this is kind of a shared project but there's going to be clearly met costs and there's going to be clearly norfolk costs and that's this is the best this is the best we can do right now to say how the project's going to be funded so any questions up to this point um two, yeah, two, two questions um we visit for me now the timelines for these various projects because they're a little skewed from what we originally projected. So you're going to bid in October. We're going to bid at the end of October, and we're looking to receive f both filed sub bids and general bids uh, by Christmas. Okay. So you'll have the bids by Christmas. Award when? Uh, seeing that the the numbers are good and the project is on budget then we could have a contract signing within four weeks so it would be January okay. and then construction can start immediately because it's indoors okay. yes now when are you going to go to bid for the fire station probably in the fall of 2017 because we can't have any contractor involvement at the fire station until the police department move out. Right, I understand. And occupancy for the police department would be January of 18. Okay. Now that's not necessarily occupancy of the MEC. That's only occupancy of the police department. MEC can have their own schedule. They just can't move in earlier than that date, but they potentially could move in much later than that date. Yeah, they, okay. They'll be doing fit up and stuff. They will be doing. They will be doing construction upstairs. They'll be doing computer installation. Um, second question. Fire station. Um, I mean, I, I, the only numbers that have changed in this at all are the uh, the site work, which I understand. I think I've asked this before, but I want to ask it again. How firm or how comfortable are you with those numbers? Uh, I'm comfortable given the scope of work that's represented on the drawings. If the scope doesn't change, I'm comfortable. Okay. Cool. You had a question? Thanks for asking the question, Jim. Okay. What do you anticipate that we start the meetings with the fire department to go over the project and the construction costs? What do you anticipate that we benchmark I would say spring of next year. Uh, uh, once the contract sign and the construction starts on the police department, uh, I would feel comfortable starting the process again with fire department. And, and we've got obviously some room. Yep. Uh, the contingency this is part of the second question. Uh, you've got one point on one point two million dollars on the contingency. Um, clearly, we don't want to spend all that on the police station. So, how do we ensure that we? Uh, protect that to a certain degree would it not make sense to perhaps um, take it proportionately to the two bids and make sure that we have enough reserves for the fire station as well y yeah that is undesignated right, right now for the project one project. It, gets, it gets easy to oops you know um, and you know you get too many oops and you don't have any oops left well all of that contingency funds we don't have any ability to spend it. It's only you as a right. committee have the ability oh, I, to spend it. I understand, it. So but if, if you're going to look at saying you, you can restrict, if there are change order requests, you as a committee have the ability to say no. Uh, I, I, I turn to you, George. I would just suggest that at least to start that, you know, whether oh, it be well. proportional or however we choose to decipher right. this, that we at least put a line in the mm -hmm. sand that says that we've got a certain oh, share no, no, no for each question. project. I would agree because we need contingency although, for both projects. We're going to need them. And, Absolutely. And um, we've both been through this before. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I just don't want to eat it up too easily. No, that, I know. Um, I, no anything that, that won't happen. Uh, anything that's concerned. pertaining well, to a contingency no. has to come to you. No. You have to fully understand it. I, I understand, but you know, you get somebody saying, "Well, you know, I can't finish it if I don't get it." Yeah, I mean, we've played the game. I, we've we've both been in this game before. I just want, no. I'd like a line in the sand on saying that we got X amount for each project. I would like first to see the the bids come in at seven seven two six or lower. Well, that's and a different that's issue. the first step we have to get to. Okay, I, I'm just yeah, but I, once we actually 
approve the bids and get the contractor lined up, um, then I think we should start out on the police station right away. On the fire station. Uh, on the fire, excuse me, the fire station. Yeah, I, I would agree. I don't think there's there needs to be a delay. You have to you have to just then schedule the bidding for the contractor to understand what the start date of construction is. Right, right. you can do that. Yeah. And he'll, he'll plug in a, a factor to accommodate right. that. Right. Yep. Um, so the committee's aware, I think the last plans we had seen showed the generators on the left side of the building when you drive up right. on, they did. those have been moved to the Sally Port side. So um, the plan is to trench behind the building and to get them over far away for noise and all those other things but so that is in the works well done um, I am working on numbers for cameras and access control and furniture just to get real numbers right now um, I did get a number for cameras and access control but they lumped it together even though I told them six times to have it separate but he'll have it separate um, for the regional and for the Norfolk Police, so that it's clear for what's paid for by State 911 uh, on the second floor and what's paid for by the town of Norfolk for cameras and access control. So that is ongoing behind the scenes. I have one uh, one request on the exterior of the building, and that has to do with the metal panels that are existing on the Sharon Avenue elevation in our. August 4th cost estimate we had removed metal panels on the front elevation and on the left elevation and on the right elevation and we said well because of the we were over budget we reduced the number of panels that we replaced to only the front face and, and it was three quarters of the front face and I had passed out a, a rendering of what that looked like yep there's been a request to change the color on the outside of the building to another color. And if we were to do that, we really need to then replace the panels on the Sharon Avenue end elevation and change the panels that were going to be existing over the two end Sallyport bays. We've given a number of about forty to fifty thousand dollars to take the existing panels off, put up new panels. It's to achieve an aesthetic. It's not to achieve any other increased R values or anything. It's, just, it's, an, it's something that we could get another look on the outside of the building. What's the color? Uh, the police department are interested in going with a gray with a blue on the outside of the building. A blue stripe at the second floor window level. Instead of the, and they, they've Seems been calling it butterscotch. <laughs> we can get rid of the butterscotch like building <laughs> and then go to a gray blue exterior on the building have you looked at painting it we have looked at painting it and we're we're concerned with that because it's a baked enamel panel right now and trying to apply a paint finish we feel is a maintenance headache for you that your baked enamel finish is your is your your better product and trying to paint over it has a potential for flaking and peeling and sort of like a bathtub yeah painting a bathtub <laughs> Have you done that? Yeah, I have actually. Oh. George, no, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the 577,000, is that what you were planning on using to, uh, to redo all the panel? What's the 577 number on? Uh, that's the. I think that's, that's the. Is that for the floor? That's for that's the second that's floor. No, that's there. for the second floor. Yeah. Um, I have a budget. So what, what about the roof? The, the roof, roof is. The roof is being removed, and there's a new roof being applied. <coughs> so you're still going with a standing seating roof? Yes. Okay. We are, th our structural engineer is in conversation with the home office of Nucor. Uh, they're talking about what's the easiest way to achieve that. We have to, because there's increased loads on the, the building and increased loads because of anticipated solar, we have to reinforce the roof steel and we have to achieve a higher R value in the roof. So the question right now is, do we have to take the first roof off to put another roof on? And that question still going back and forth between the engineers, whether the existing roof has to come off or not. But we are definitely going over it 
with a standing seam, new metal standing seam insulated panel. So they can't just uh, put insulated panels down and then put the standing seam over it and then attach it through? We'd have to put, the question becomes we have to put new girts under the existing roof. And whether that's even possible to thread them in with the existing roof in place or whether those panels have to come off it'll be easier to take them off just put new girts down and then apply the panels right to that maybe easier to achieve we want to we want to accomplish a project where the contractor says yeah this makes sense it makes sense to take it off it was too much of a headache if you, if you don't take it off or the engineering in is it Kentucky I think Kentucky is where the home office is that we've been talking to. Kentucky or Tennessee, one of the, one of those. <laughs> They're telling us what's what's the easiest way to accomplish this. And but the only reason you're doing it is so that we can have a um, a longer run warranty on the roof. Better insulating value, concealed fasteners. Because everything up there now is exposed fasteners. Yep. Increase the roof loading for solar panels. And okay, also... The panels are going to do that? Yeah. 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 And we're going to reinforce the steel because of it. And we also have to increase the loading because it's now an essential facility. So all of those come into play when we're looking at the structure in the roof. We've done a lot of solar panels on these commercial buildings, and with the same type of roof that's there now, and um, I mean, uh, Joffrey just did it, and they put 2,300 panels up there, and the uh, the weight didn't make any difference to the roof, nor the um, the type of roof that was up there. Um, they, what they did is they sprayed a um, a rubber membrane over them, and then just I mean, just went right over it. So. The roof was originally designed with five pounds of collateral load on it. So if you were to take the building as it sits right now, it was designed with an extra five pounds for loading. If you want to put solar panels up there, you've taken care of that and, and it would accommodate it. But now we're also on the inside hanging ceilings, we're hanging ductwork, we're hanging lighting. We have to increase the load for, for essential facility. So we've increased the, the wind load. The snow load criteria is higher. So that's what's adding the load. If it was just take that building and put solar panels on it, you could do it. If you're looking at the end use of the building being a regional dispatch center underneath this roof, having thousands of exposed fasteners in there would just be an accident waiting to happen. And I did ask that question too to some commercial roofers in the they agreed with you that it's a better system to put in the standing seam, you know, for an office space yeah. versus um, the way, what it was planned on. So the planned use of the building, if you had a little bit of leaking through some fasteners, it wouldn't have impacted the use of that building. Right. And you could repair it as the, as they started to leak. But I think having all of the technology and the, the final use of a rec center underneath that roof, they can't accommodate any leaking that might occur from all those fasteners. There's thousands of fasteners through that roof. Mm -hmm. All of them relying on a little neoprene washer to keep it watertight. Mm -hmm. And those tend to dry out. Yep. And over time, there's thousands of penetrations that uh, I don't want to be the one responsible for all those problems down the road. Or, or you, as a committee, saying, why did you do this? You had enough roof issues, I think, on buildings in this town for one year. I was just trying to try to find the line item for that we, what we had for metal panels. The south elevation, which is the long wall, uh, 42,988. And then we had some at the north elevation, some fill-in fill or non-insulated at 13,009. So the, the p metal panels we were putting on, which would have been butterscotch, is 42,988. 
That's why I say about forty or fifty thousand more. We could extend it around the corner. We we could make two sides of the building all new, and then we can control the color. We can order it with a baked enamel finish, and it doesn't have to be butterscotch. And then just fill in those uh, window panels. Oh, sorry. Um, in the rear. Yeah. We'd use the panels that we take off to infill on the rear, okay. so they would match on the rear. Because there's enough of the panels that are coming off that infill the back. On, on a different subject, the uh, parking is on the other lot. Are we going to incorporate that into this lot with a, uh, the driveway just so that um, it's all on one lot? Uh, it's a question for the town. Whether you need to combine lots between the is it town of the water district and the Sharon Avenue. Is parking on the water in the water? Yeah. yeah, we're going across the property line. Yeah, it's combined lots with combined lots. Well, it, or just combine that portion of it, that's yeah. all. You know, with the, with the exit <coughs> going out into the, um, the water tower uh, driveway. Which we're probably going to widen anyways, aren't we? For this? The water driveway? Yeah. We weren't, we were not anticipating widening that road. We need to do that. The only we I don't think it's 24 feet, so you only have... Um, we were always talking about putting a separate access for police use only to the sally port. Right. Through the... Um, and no, but you're going to have cars, police cars coming and going, so I would think that you're going to have ad adequate access. Um, so how wide is it really? Is it 18 feet wide or 24? That entrance? It looked to take two... two Two widths of cars on there. Yeah. I don't think it's a one-lane road going up there. Okay. It's not a one-lane. No. It's, it's not 24, though. You're right. But yeah. it's, it's not one-lane. Uh, something we should probably consider when you're looking at it, when you're putting the lots together. That take Combining that lots, I if you want to combine lot, that's that's an activity for the uh, surveyor to do. Right. It's so it's, it's not our consultant. It would be your consultant to, to do that surveying to combine something. Well, we've already had it surveyed, so all we got to do is just add that portion of it. Yeah, it would be the surveyor would do it. Give it yeah. to the planning board to sign off on. It's not a big deal. It's just when you're doing a site plan. Um, Why does the planning board have to be involved in that? Because well, it's part of site plan. Because what? You're moving a lot line. Yeah. But it's owned by the town. Yeah, they still have to approve it. They don't have to approve the rationale. They just have to approve the just to meet the minimums, whatever the minimums are, uh, would be approved by the planning board. Okay. Because I know when they went out to do the survey of the 14 Sharon Ave, they just did a few points going up the road. Do you want me to have them come out and do the water tank lot to survey that whole lot and tie them together, or to put in? Do, do we need to do that? Just do the minimum to get the. Yeah, do the minimum the just to. To draw the lot that you're going to actually have all everything on there for police. Okay. All right. Do you want me to? Do you want to approve like a few thousand dollars, or do you want me to get a quote from PLA from the surveyor, or how do you want to? How's the committee? I, I wouldn't think it would cost that much money. So the $2, survey we did. Yeah, we did the survey at 14 Sharon Ave was 3,500. So. I mean for. Short money in the yeah. scheme. Hasn't he already drawn? Couldn't we get Norfolk County to do it and do it for free? I don't care. Why don't we look at yeah. that? See if we can okay. get Norfolk County to do it. May not be in the same timeline, that's all. I think we're in a real rush. No, no. Just beat up the zoning officer and put him in the back closet for a little while. <laughs> so I guess, uh, is the committee interested in doing, <laughs> doing <laughs> new siding on two entire two sides of the building? That's fine with me. Yeah, as okay. long as it fits the budget, fine. Yeah. Well, it's going to be it's going to be more a little bit more than what's in here, but that could be the contingency too. But well, it could also we be still have to bid it. You could yeah. get a lower bid. We yeah. we still have to see what it is on the bid. Right. Um, another item that's been discovered in the last month is the fact that the industrial park is all connected into a common septic system. We knew that. 
what we didn't know is each lot is only permitted to discharge so much gallons of water per day into that system and the original property was within those regulations having a police department in a mech we now far exceed the discharge rate for this these this common septic system so we need to go back through the town and see that that discharge rate could be increased or what has to happen to the common system to accommodate the in increased flow well, I think we've got to go to the association that's there and find out what excess capacity they have that may not have been used by the other lots the way I understand it. that's correct so each one of the lots was assigned a certain capacity and right I think the capacity and, and don't quote me in these numbers but the capacity that this lot was approved for was around th 400 gallons and we're right now at about 1300 gallons so we exceed the allowed by probably a factor of three I think the other option though that Nate's talked about the civil engineers is getting a variance through DEP to try to lower that rate of gallons per you know how many people will actually be in the building I think luckily since this site work is going to be done by the DPW and outside the general contractor scope it buys us some time so it's not going to delay a bid while we figure this out but it is something that we need to figure out I had emailed Ray about a week ago and he got me in touch with Betsy and I think she misinterpreted what I was looking for I she sent me all the info for 14 Sharon Ave septic which we already have so she emailed me back this morning she's going to get me the stuff on the development leaching field and septic so hopefully I'll have that today or tomorrow and I can get that to the civil engineer to continue what we're doing but because that process would take two or three months to go through DEP if we need to get a variance um, but luckily like I said the site work is going to be handled outside the general contractor scope so it's not going to delay the building bid which is the, the critical have you thought about reaching out to the association to see what excess capacity they have you may not need a variance if the capacity is there and it might be quicker if, if we had a contact name or yeah we're, we're trying to find that information so if you have a name or a contact one building over it's Mike Sosi all right <laughs> if that's who we need to contact that's who we should contact yeah you Mike Sosi how many lots did that lighting company we can take? do that yeah it's probably easy that's uh, why it's we'll right that. it's how a many lots did that lighting company take up four four lots so you would think there'd be some excess capacity there should be excess capacity that's storage. yeah and I know um, Taylor rental yeah yeah I mean they, they took four lots and if it's by lot and we know that's mostly storage you'd think there'd be some excess capacity there, there should there should I think there was built in some excess capacity <laughs> in the whole system I believe there was, uh, from what I'm told. So uh, I think there's a possibility to get what we need to, to make that building work. Is there a governing body down there anymore? I mean, is yes. there is? Okay. Yeah. There is. The association took over from the developers. So they're managing it now. So who's going to contact these, the association to find out? Ray and I can do that. Okay. He we'll, we'll knows them well. All right. That's, that's that's kind of important. We could get you there. Try not to forget. <laughs> we can get you our <laughs> engineer's anticipated flow uh, to let you know what that number is. Yeah, I think I had some of the drafting flow if you just to yeah. just finalize it. That would be helpful. We were going to try to negotiate. Generate. The right, generator. Right, the generator, or are you just going with? I can can give an update on generator. Uh, I had talked at the last meeting about uh, emergency generators and who potentially can pay <coughs> pay for what. It's been ter determined on the MEC side that the state will provide a hundred percent costs of the MEC generator but they will not contribute to the primary generator. So we've talked about 
what does that mean for the project? You know, one of the courses of action would be have the MEC buy their generator for their second floor, and that's all they get. And the town of Norfolk buys a generator just to do their main floor. And you have two generators, but one's a first floor generator, one's a second floor generator in simpli simplistic terms. That would reduce the cost of the project, but it eliminates the redundancy. And the whole reason for two generators was to give the MEC redundancy, to give the second floor redundancy. Now, now when I say MEC, you have to start thinking that the MEC is that training classroom upstairs also, and the EOC, in addition to the dispatch center. Does the state require redundancy? Uh, they like a d a redundancy, they don't require redundancy because they always have another fallback say your redundancy is we're turning you off and we're now transferring calls to another location. That's for them that's redundancy. So if, if, if this were just a standalone MEC, no police station involved, they would only pay for a primary? One yeah. generator yeah. for the MEC. So they're not going to share costs for the, for the um, one primary generator. In looking at the costs, the, the primary generator, you had the numbers here somewhere. 240. The primary generator is about $240,000. The backup, the, the MEC generator is $132,000. MEC is getting funded for their $132,000 portion. You could just do $130,000 and just do your do your generator for your portion. But we felt for $236,000, so there's about a $100,000 increase, which the town would have to pick up. Now you've provided redundancy. And in conversations with the MEC, in conversations with the town, we just felt we're going to proceed with the primary generator to do 100% load of the building. The MEC will be providing a secondary generator bid as part of the alternate and paid for through the MEC. So you're, we have an opportunity here to reduce costs by $100,000. We just decided we're not going to go that route. And I just wanted to have you on board with that thinking. Of, of the rationale as to why we're not going to go that route. So, are you? Let me be sure I followed your logic there. I, I, I follow the logic of the. Of the I want to go just the logic of the numbers. Mm -hmm. The original bid included a primary and a backup. Right. Yes. So, now you're suggesting that we. So you're not changing the cost from our side you're just eliminating the potential for a savings. Is that another way to say it? That is another way to say it. Okay. Yeah. So, so you wouldn't reduce the size of the first floor generator to just do essential areas? You know, so that they do the essential areas on the first level and essential areas on the second level? Where it gets, the, the majority of the load in the generator is now going to your HVAC systems. And we're not just, the plug the plug loads are, are not that great for the generator. The plug loads are pretty easy to accommodate, and you don't need a lot of generator to just get plug loads taken care of. Lighting, again, if you're looking at the amount of load going into the generator, lighting is not your, your main contributor. Your heating and air conditioning is your primary generator, and it's hard to say we're only going to heat or a portion of the first floor. If you're under generator load in the winter, you have to provide heat to the entire space. That's your major contributor to this generator size. You're going to keep some areas cooler. You're going to have to maintain cooling to some areas. Even in the winter, you're going to be providing cooling to the mech spaces and equipment spaces. So you're going to need cooling 12 months out of the year in certain areas. So it, it's getting harder to try to split off what you might not need when the main contributor is your heating and cooling. So that's one, one aspect that we've looked at. What you're getting under the, the current design 
is you're actually the t what's the town of Norfolk's end game on this and benefit is you get redundancy also to your EOC. Mm -hmm. So if there is an emergency, if there is a c failure of a primary generator, you gain the redundancy of you have a backup for your EOC training classroom. And you have the potential then to move into that if you need to, to stay operational for the police department. If there was a second floor generator, first floor generator, we don't know which one might fail. The mech fails, they're out. They have no backup, no redundancy. They'd have to transfer calls somewhere. So they've lost their redundancy. If you have just the first floor generator go out, then you have the ability to go upstairs. But the redundancy is what you've lost. So we felt for a, the $100,000 investment back to the town of Norfolk, there's your benefit, is you built in redundancy for both occupants. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay. I think because the other option to delete or to make generators smaller is to add a boiler and base heat throughout, I mean, right? Which is, but that's yeah. and obviously a cost. You're off the RF, VRF system now and you're back into another type of mechanical system. Right, which is a whole nother, but that's what yeah. the Dennis Town Hall and other, right, I agree. Yeah. So I think it's keep the generator a little yeah. bit, I, then it's a whole nother system you don't have to maintain. Right. I agree. So, but other buildings with the VRF system have a boiler with heat just because if it were to go out yeah. so the generator doesn't have to be huge. Question. Yeah, we were going to ask Michael here to explain the forty thousand dollars that they're talking about for the uh, I think it was sixty two. But I think original we actually didn't the whole plan going into today's regional meeting was to approve the fiber in the tower to get those rolling and unfortunately because of some the way some grants are ri written um, the first grant from 2012 is still under Rentham and the rest of the grants are under the Metacomet um, and the way Rentham's been reimbursed has been brutal six eight months for twenty thirty thousand dollars so Rentham was not really excited about signing up a million dollars today <laughs> um, and then making payments and waiting a year or, or more. So unfortunately, we couldn't approve them today in the regional meeting. We, are, we set up a meeting after the meeting today with Frank Posniak, the director of State 9111 for Monday, and myself, um, Gary Primu, the IT director from Franklin, was one of the leads of the operations board um, and Jeff Nutting, the town administrator from Franklin and Bill Ketchum, the town administrator from Brentham will be there on Monday. So hopefully we can, but so that probably buys a little bit of time, but we have had um, the fiber quote on the meeting minutes um, since a couple meetings. And obviously it makes sense to do them both at once. Um, Mike, if you want to explain a little bit about the benefits of the line that will go from the town hall to the police. Sure. The, um, oh, the yeah. All right. So the, um, the main reason to put the fiber line into the, the, <coughs> uh, the new police station, aside from the, uh, um, the new dispatch center, is that the basically we're building a high security, highly redundant building for, the, for our town meaning the police station. Um, without a, a fiber channel, a, a, data, a data communication line that goes into the, the space, it's, it's almost like it's a waste. Um, we, as a town, we can use that space to put our, um, there's a server infrastructures and, and things in, in, in that nature that we can secure our data. And copying back and forth, um, and in my mind, that, that, that just a, uh, a something that, that makes sense to do right now, um, because right now, uh, for example, like in the current public safety building, we have our, our phone system, the, the core is over there. Uh, our financial system is going through the public safety. So because th those infrastructure are considered essential for the town to function, so the uh, th that's why it's located there. Now we're building an even better building, 
So without a communication channel to that building, um, it, it's, um, you know, it, it's a space that we just cannot use properly. So, and if I bought the cable, I, I believe the, uh, the warranty is at least 30 years, 30, 40 years. Uh, because it, it's glass fiber, so it does not degrade like metal fiber. So the uh, um, so that the, the longevity is there. And usually for for town, currently uh, we have fiber optic network for all town buildings. Um, that is so far is working great that we can we can locate infrastructure um, the uh, technology infrastructure across across the board. Uh, it doesn't matter where it is and. Um, that that we 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 can leverage that the network now with the new PlayStation. I, I think it just makes sense to pull in. So um, I hope that. Okay. So yeah, and part of the fiber scope for the regional is to tie in all four towns: Norfolk, Franklin, Renton, Plainville, all the fire stations and the police stations to tie them all into the the regional. So that's a it's a six hundred thousand dollar item. Um, obviously, in the quote we got to do. From the town hall, and I think they stop at the park, or there was yep. some other. <laughs> and the uh, um, the aside from carrying the communication channel between the town hall and the new police station, um, we can pick up Pound Street Field along the way because the the line will go right in front of the field. So if and when that uh, the the recreation building is built, we can simply tap in the line which is I think 30 40 feet uh, from where the pole the poles are and just that alone um, it, it, it's just great saving over there because we don't have to run another channel from town hall to the pond street field because the line is already there we just have to to drag another line over so if the, the cost might seem high right now but once uh, even when that building does go in that's when another saving will come in place so it, it's like what? This is a six hundred thousand dollar cost. No, no, sixty-two for this for, for Norfolk. It's it's Mac. a regional cost for the okay. the state. You said six hundred thousand. Yeah, no, the yeah. state is covering the the big nut. That's all part of the so regional. It's sixty-two for us. Sixty-two and for is that in the bid? Correct. No, that that's a that's this a is side thing. Yeah, that was never real. It was just brought up because all the fiber that's we've, we talked about it some time ago. Um, Mike got a quote from the same company that will be doing um, the fiber for the regional that's off the bus, you know the state contract um, I think the other when we met with American Alarm Deputy Chief Carroll Matt Mike we talked about I don't think at the Pond Street Park and correct me if I'm wrong but I don't think there's any pull station or any call box or anything but there is potential we talked to American Alarm about you know putting one of those stands with a camera on it that someone could god forbid anything happen but they could call um you know the police station and there could be a camera on top just the way the world is going nowadays but it is a potential to put one or two of those at the park for safety if that's you know something the town would be interested in yeah i mean you probably all know a couple years ago we put fiber in between all the buildings and bob and i probably speak to the other people here that are working here. I mean, it's just it's night and day compared to what it used to be as far as technology performance, uh, being able to grab, you know, uh, for our systems that cross over between buildings. Uh, certainly this would be a high-end use. Uh, it does make a lot of big difference. Uh, keep adding on to the project, you know, having scope creep, but uh, well, we could do it as a cap. We could do it through the fall town meeting too as a capital request if we wanted to do it outside of this project. That would be another option. And that's yeah, with the amount of cameras that'll be in this building and the access control. I mean, it's it's huge to be able to control that. And I know that a hard thing for the police is to is storage of video and things like that about how long you can keep. You know, um, so we don't have free cash certified yet, do we? His balance sheet done, but it's not certified. Well, but what, something. What okay. do we have to make this decision? Is I think we were hoping to do it. Obviously, it makes sense to do it with the other project, but we weren't able to approve that one today. So I think we can leave it on the docket, and you well, know. Well, what I'm saying is, 
You know, when we get back the bids, if it looks like we have money, fine. But if we don't, can we put it as a capital project on the Springtown meeting? Or is that too late? No. Okay. I think the price, though, is based on them doing the other project at the same time because they're going to run these lines all, all together and then split it off at um, the rec center. That's, that was my understanding. Right. Well, we'd like, we're pushing that the whole snow thing, too. So as soon as they'll do the work, as soon as we give them the go, I think, you know, I mean, um, but that's not going to happen. Hopefully we can get some answers or some definitive things out of State 911 on Monday and then move forward. But well, we don't want to cause any more delays, though, so right. none of this is going to facilitate any additional delays, is it? I mean, if we defer this I decision, if we look at alternative ways of funding this? I think on the MEC side, on the regional side, it's going to take them, they, I heard anywhere from six to eight months to install all of that fiber because they're going four towns. To, so it's going to it's going to take a while for them to do that. Um, I mean, I would agree that we have to do that. I, I right. But we have different ways that we can fund $62,000. In timing. Well, that's what I'm asking. Yeah, I mean, can you, could we wait to approve our thing until after, like George said, the town meeting? And we're only talking to the 62 for our town. So I mean, we could be at the tail end of the installation. Yeah. Potentially. That's, that's what I'm saying. There is a time for them to do what is four town install it's six hundred thousand dollars worth of fiber that's going to take them some time to do it and again we need to see what these bits look like yeah mm -hmm. you'll know that by end christmas. of the year yeah christmas christmas christmas, christmas. Hopefully. Yeah. christmas. <laughs> we hope <laughs> with a bow <laughs> okay all right what else uh Thanks, Mike. I think minutes, right? I think we have to approve yep. minutes, George. This from, is uh, August 16th. The 16th, yeah. All right. I need a motion to approve the minutes from the August 16th meeting. Uh, so moved. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, they are accepted. All right, Brian, what do we need to do to get this bid moving? What do we do? The meeting. Oh, just give us a little bit more time. I think the highlights that I gave you about the septic, we're going to want to know that before we go out to bid, just to understand that it's, it's a project that's not going to be held up. Um, I think the information we're getting from the police department is the information we need. So do we need to meet again before we go out to bid? Or? Yes. Uh, I think yes. you'd want to authorize yes. that to happen, yes. What's your time frame? When, when should we meet? Next Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can authorize I it today if you want. We don't have anything I to authorize. Eighteenth, <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Yeah, I think that's 18th. the the eight. Eighteenth is the next next uh, MEC. October eighteenth. October eighteenth is when the MEC was looking to authorize. Good. Oh, thank you. So when is it? Well, when are we talking about? The October 18th. You're meeting with the Met, though. No. no. They, they meet in the morning. Okay, in the morning. All right, so we can meet at 4 o'clock. We meet here at 4 o'clock. That's perfect. So the 18th, October 18th. 18th. Yep. yep. Okay. I guess that did, we did have a little, do, do the plans have to go through planning and zoning? At, I don't know. I think we had a little discussion at the last meeting. I don't think you need zoning. Okay. Unless going for a special permit with the zoning board. And you don't need plenty more. It doesn't get involved in public buildings. Okay. So as long as I know it came up and Ray wasn't, I don't think at the last meeting. So, I mean but as long as courtesy, do we have to do a submission no, before this? The um, they had a meeting with them and just kind of showed them what they did. Yeah. Four o'clock. Four o'clock on the eighteenth. Yes. Well, I guess we could discuss that more on the 18th then, and then if we need to, you know, before it goes out to bid, and I think there'll be thorough reviews on Brian's end, um, you know, and I'll do, and I'll get them to Bob, and we can make sure that these bid documents are as tight as they can be, you know. I mean, that's the most critical. Well, should one of us be talking to uh, the planning board and say, you know, do we need to go through you? I mean, we'd be glad as a courtesy to... 
to make a presentation, but I, I don't want this to hold up going out to bed. We didn't do that with the school. Well, you had one meeting with the with the planning board. Did but it was courtesy. It was just just an inf informational because they're yeah. not and they don't have oversight on public buildings. I mean, we could get on their agenda and go through it. I'm not trying to circumvent. I just don't right. want to delay it. Well, why don't we? I mean, we're not changing buildings. The building, right? I mean, no. We're not we're changing the parking lot, but it's a commercial district um, should be a relatively painless meeting now. Well, why don't we get on the agenda? And would you be presenting it, or should one of you folks come? What do I you can think? be here. It's Ray could present it. Could present you could just show show yeah. the plan and maybe yeah. go over it. Okay, and I'll come. Okay. When is the next meeting? October 11th. Okay. Did you see you can get us on first? <laughs> is that a night meeting, Ray? Or yes, it is. Night? Seven. 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 Okay. I'll I'll go too, right with you. Do we have to put it in a request to get on the agenda, or I'll just take care of that? Oh, Ray, okay. I'll take care of cool. that. So All right. You'll plan to be there. I'll be there. Yep. Okay. You'll have uh, some Super. drawings for him, and mm -hmm. okay. Yep. Good. Good. Okay. All right. Uh, oh, did you, did you just quit? Matt had a question. Oh, question. Matt. Just stand the microphone. Just for the uh, <laughs> sighting. Just take your name and your address. <laughs> <laughs> um, how old you are. <laughs> I'm curious to find out. I understand that the paint won't stick to the heat treated, but did we look into possibly powder coating it, having it taken down, powder coated, and putting back up so we have one uniform color throughout the building? Is this something I could get a price on fair within a week or so and give you? Because I think it would be a better job and look a lot better than having a two tone building or a three tone building. You're saying powder coat the back side? Take the paneling down, have it powder coated to the same color. It's and not replace. Just take that budget that you were talking about replacing and doing the whole building in one color. Because I, I just see that as being an eyesore. We do have to replace the front. That's that's a. We know we have to do like that. Like you said, there's another factor, like a fifty thousand dollar. You're figuring to replace the. Take down the end wall and put up with new uh, paneling on the end wall. And we would be putting what we'd be putting back up would be an insulated panel instead of the uninsulated that's there now. But that's only on one wall, right? And the we're still going to have the uninsulated in the back and on the other side. Correct. Would you mind letting me, uh, getting some quotes on having the whole thing powder coated and saving, taking that budget, seeing what it would cost to have it removed and re have it all the same color so it's aesthetically more pleasing instead of replacing? More information is better. Uh, yeah, I don't think I it can think hurt to get a price, right? I don't think you can. I know there's a large powder coating place in North Attleboro that does pretty much anything in the world. I can have them give me a rough number just to see if it makes sense at all, just instead of necessarily. Why not? Yeah. So uh, you're going to take I'll down powder coat and put back up? Yeah. On the rear wall? On the rear wall. Is that what you're proposing? Yes. Just the rear wall. Rear wall and the Sally Port wall. Sally the whole thing should yeah. be one, one color, color no, I instead mean of having. Yep. It's just gonna. I like that stripe idea though. Luke. I can the see why you don't want the stripe idea or butterscotch. I can see why you wouldn't want. I'll that. take a pat on the shoulder. That was mine, right, Chief? <laughs> I, I got to <laughs> okay. run. that. So I'll get some rough numbers and I'll give them to Jack just to see what it would cost to have it. And obviously we have a carpentry. Somebody come in, take them down, and rehang them, but have them powder coated. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Matt. So, we're all set till the 18th. Okay, meeting adjourned. Aye.